Folks, welcome back to the Wanneroo channel. I hope everyone is doing great out there. Thank you for tuning in this evening. It's supposed to be a nice evening with the temperatures dropping into the low 50s in the middle of summer. Can't complain about that. So, our Toro trimmer here. Last year, I dropped a review video on this, uh, which has proven to be, be uh, pretty popular. And since I dropped that review back in November 2023, uh, I have uh, learned new things here about the Toro trimmer um, that I've experimented with and I wanted to go through in this video uh, a couple of tips and tricks I learned and also one issue that I ran into to rectif uh, that needed to be rectified and I'll go through that with you. So folks, the first thing that I ran into whenever I started it up this year and this was an issue that came up, someone left a comment in one of my reviews and at the time, I was so busy, and I'm still just totally overwhelmed with so much stuff, um, that uh, I didn't really have time to deal with it. And I took it to the uh, Toro dealer who quickly rectified what the issue was. It turns out it's right in the owner's manual. And so in a future video, we are going to go through this. And let me show you what we are talking about here. So the issue that I was running into with this was um, the rotor up there. Uh, was not turning uh, hardly at all and anytime it would hit anything it would pretty much stop its rotation well as it turns out right here this is part of the the maintenance process in the uh, manual and this right here is part of the uh, solution to it pretty simple overall so I think what I'm going to do is do a separate video on that in the future in case anyone runs into that issue it's right in the owner's manual it's all laid out uh, as, a uh, as something you can do on your own. Uh, they do, of course, you can always take it to a Toro dealer and just have them mess with it. They charge me 60 bucks to basically do it. Turns out I probably could have done it myself. But what this does right here is this keeps the tension on the belt. So probably what happened for me when I started using it back in the early spring uh, was it was still pretty cold. And so at that time, probably just from sitting out in the cold barn, uh, the belt had kind of shrunk maybe a bit or something, and the tension was off. So they adjusted the tension on it. Who knows? I don't know why it was. It just, you know, just wasn't doing its thing. So basically what they did was they adjusted the tension on it. Boom, came back to life, full power, no problems whatsoever. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you do run into that with the Toro trimmer. Um, that there is an adjustment process with this right here uh, to make sure that that belt is uh, totally tensioned uh, to basically get the job done. So if for some reason, if the front here, the one that's usual spinning around, starts to slow down and it's running into resistance where it pretty much stops, uh, the, the tension's probably off and you just need to do that adjustment or have the Toro dealer do it. Said in the future, um, you know, I'll probably try to put together a video on how to, you know, how to do that um, on your own. Um, again, folks, one thing I want to emphasize is uh, you're just getting to see what I do. Uh, just assume I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, <laughs> that said, the next thing is, and again, I don't want you to have any idea of making modifications to your machine or whatever. Uh, this is just what I've done. So I'm just going to show you what I've done. Um, first thing here is right here at the exhaust. Well, this had a spark protector on it, which uh, kind of carboned up a fair bit. And where I live, it's wet all the time. Uh, there's one part of the year where it might get dry kind of at the end of winter. but And so just to make sure the engine is performing good and all that, and I don't really need the spark arrestor here, I just went ahead and took it off, put it to the side. Like I said, I don't really think that it's an issue here where I would need it. Now, some of y'all living out west and stuff like that, that might be more a concern or an issue uh, where you definitely want, would want to have that on there. And it's real easy to decarbonize those. So if it does get all carboned up, you know, it's, it's kind of an easy fix. It's just another maintenance thing. But um, anyways, I took mine off. Now, here's another big one here. And again, I'm not telling folks to make modifications to their machine or whatever. This is just what I did watching different video that I have filmed of me using this and then also after noticing it on film coming back and looking at it myself one of the things with this is you kind of have inside here let me actually lift it up so you can see 
right here inevitably uh, you will get some grass that's going to get kind of twisted up in there or whatever depending on how your grass grows now one thing I want to emphasize is that where I use this machine my grass grows up to five to six feet high and we just have crazy grass here which is good for the folks that grow hay and stuff um, but it's kind of the natural grass that just grows around here so I'm not living in the suburbs and I don't have that type of grass it's only going to grow a couple inches you know maybe six or eight inches I have pretty crazy grass so do understand that to, to begin with um, with this real tall grass and stuff it's inevitable some of it will get wrapped up around there periodically you're going to have to go in there and clean that out okay so watching this on camera and having this rubber shield that they give you installed on the right side over here um, what I was finding was that with that real tall grass I would see it on video kind of wrapping and folding in on itself and then that was contributing it to getting it all clogged up in there so one of the things I did was was I went ahead and I took off that rubber shield completely and I noticed on one of the competitors models they don't even uh, put one on and I think that machine is pretty similar here to the Toro might even have the same engine not sure but anyways I went ahead and just took that rubber thing off and put it to the side and what I notice now is is that with the grass it's not really kind of using that shield to fold in upon itself and then end up getting wrapped around here as much so it's still a thing where I have to get in here with some long needle nose pliers on occasion and clean that out but it's really not as, as big an issue as it was before. And here's the other a positive benefit is that now what I notice is that um, it's actually cutting a lot better than it was before. And I think it's because with that chute not being there and all that grass getting kind of folded up in here, it's, it's able to cut better because it's more clear, it's more open, you know. So again, I'm not telling anybody to make a modification to their machine. That's totally up to you is just what I happened to find and what I ran into and ended up getting better performance out of it. In my review, comprehensive review video that I did, I mentioned I was experimenting with a lot of different uh, trimmer line uh, for this machine and trying to find, uh, you know, what worked best and all that. And I'm gradually kind of getting there, so I'm probably going to continue to experiment as I find new things. And uh, first thing is, I do want to emphasize here, is whatever trimmer line that you do use uh, I highly recommend and if you don't know this already soak it in water it will absorb water and make it a lot more pliable and your trimmer line will last a lot longer so pretty much I just have a five gallon bucket here filled with water um, I just let the trimmer line sit in there anytime I need a piece of trimmer line I go in there and I grab a piece take it out and install it uh, when the water gets too yucky, just chuck it out and put it, put uh, new water in there, and we're good to go. Different trimmer line I've experimented with. First thing here is this very convenient uh, organ pre-cut uh, trimmer line. This is 0.155 inch, which is what uh, Toro pretty much recommends. And you need exactly 21 inches. Um, that is what is uh, recommended for this. More than that, you run into issues, it gets all chopped up. Shorter than that, you're not really helping yourself. In fact, Toro actually has marks here, one on this side and one on that side, where if you have a big roll of trimmer line, you can actually kind of roll it out, um, kind of form it along the edge there, and then cut it. So you can get a long roll of trimmer line and basically cut it yourself if you want, or you can get these pre-cut trimmer lines here. Now the gator line, what I find with this, is this works real well uh, with just standard grass. Um, not too thick of, of weeds or you know plants and you know, flowers and stuff like that but you know just general purpose grass pretty much is is what it's good for um, and it seems to do just fine with that and that's where it, it typically shines uh, it is kind of square cut pretty much I find that you can uh, use it on um, thicker brush but it doesn't perform as well and it seems like the sharp edges on the sides here kind of go away a bit quicker so that's not really where I think it's meant to shine in fact they even make note of that here on the uh, the container here but uh, this organ stuff for regular grass that works just fine uh, you can use that
Now, the other one uh, that I've tried that has worked quite well, I just end up, ended up getting these pre-cut uh, ones that are 21 inches again, uh, is this grass skater stuff right here. And I've been very happy with the grass skater stuff. Now, I've heard some people complain about it in the past, um, but the one thing uh, that I find with it is that as long as you soak it in water, uh, I, I really don't have much in the way of issues with it. I find with this, it tends to cut a bit better on thicker, uh, more dense brush uh, than the organ stuff does. So I know, I already kind of know ahead of time, if I'm going to go into an area that has thicker brush and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and put this to use and, uh, and use this uh, instead of the organ stuff. So very happy with this. Uh, I think I've got, yes, I have some right here in the bucket. Let me show it to you close up. So... Pretty much it has a lot of uh, real kind of sharp, uh, sharper edges uh, there. It's kind of almost like a pentagon type shape. And like I said, that, that seems to work pretty well for like thicker uh, brush and things like that. Then another one that I tried, which I had high hopes for, but was just not going to happen, uh, was the serrated edge line. And I think, um, I'm pretty, who's the manufacturer on this? Now I can't remember who manufactures this. But I tried to use this, and with the serrated edge, I thought, oh, this is, this is going to be good, you know. Um, the problem was, is that for the life of me, I could not get it through the holes there um, and get it installed. It just would not work, and so I um, had to give up on that. So, unfortunately, this did not work out. So, um, I will go ahead. I have another weed eater that I can uh, cut this up into um, pieces, basically. It's one of those where you just, you know, basically stick the big, the big twine in, uh, and I can, I can use it up in that. So I've got a whole roll of it here to use. So probably it's going to take a while to use all that up. And also too, I'm going to continue to experiment with, uh, with other trimmer lines. So in the future, I will make updates as appropriate, um, as I find other trimmer line that can do the job and, uh, that, that works. In the end folks, I've been super happy with my Toro trimmer mower. I think just as long as you understand uh, what its limitations are, um, you know, it's not a gigantic um, DR uh, brush hog or anything like that um, that's, you know, taking out tree saplings and all that sort of thing. That's not really what it's kind of meant for. Um, it's kind of an upgrade from a, a weed eater in a lot of situations because you can uh, push it from behind and you don't end up getting covered in grass and stuff like that. Uh, you might get the odd piece or two, but it's not like using a weed eater where you end up, you know, just covered in grass from head to toe and all that stuff. Um, so it's a convenient uh, weed eater, uh, pretty much, and it just does the job well. So I think a lot of it is just understanding your tool and getting the most out of it and figuring out what it likes, doesn't like, and, and how to get the, the best out of it, uh, pretty much, for what it is. So in the end, folks, super happy with this. In the future, again, I will uh, try to do a video on the maintenance side of things with tensioning that belt if need be, because probably at some point in the life of the machine, that's going to be necessary. Uh, or a couple years down the road, replacing the belt will be a thing too. Uh, so we can uh, revisit that again in the future. And uh, if you do want to see more uh, Toro trimmer mower uh, videos, if there's something specific you want to see, someone was asking about uh, trimming along uh, the edge of like a stone wall or something like that. So I included some video in this video of that. So um, if you're interested, uh, I have a diverse, <laughs> diverse amount of vegetation to deal with. So if you do want to see some stuff in the future or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'm not a Toro representative. I don't represent Toro in any way. I just like using it. Um, so, you know, all I can do is just give you my opinion. But uh, anyways, folks, uh, definitely check these out. Also, check out my Amazon links down below um, for all the stuff that you saw in the video. If you do want to pick up a Toro trimmer mower, Amazon can deliver it right to your door. And also, too, all the other accoutrements that go with it, um, I will put links to that down below. Uh, commissions are earned off of those purchases, uh, and it kicks it right back to the channel to me, uh, which allows me to reinvest and do more videos, more experimenting, and more stuff and put more content out there. So I appreciate those that uh, support the channel in that way. Uh, so anyways, folks, um, hit the like and subscribe below, and we'll see you again next time.
go folks along a stone wall nice trimmed edge here maybe took me i don't know maybe a minute to work or something not a lot all looking good nicely done